Hey everybody, welcome back to h &S Collectibles. This is Cody, and tonight I'm showing my uh, Godzilla collection. Uh, so there's going to be three or four sections to it. Um, uh, VHS and Blu-rays, uh, probably the NECA figures all in a row, um, autographs, uh, and then the Bandai figures. So anyway, that's my plan. I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget tonight uh, there will be the drawing for the Shin Godzilla code. Uh, there's actually two codes now because Mark of Horror was uh, uh, nice enough to share his digital code with me and donate it to the channel. Um, so there'll be a first and a second place winner tonight that both gets a, uh, a code for Shin Godzilla. So go over to that video and comment your favorite Godzilla movie if you want a chance to enter that. So without further ado, we'll get to the Godzilla collection. So I'm going to start the collection video off with obviously what was some of the first things I bought. And that would have been back in the VHS days. So... Uh, one VHS that I still have, and I don't have many, um, is the Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah uh, VHS. Um, I always tried to take care of my VHS by just cutting the plastic out of the bottom and sliding them out. Uh, the plastic has come open a little bit on me on the back, but I bought this in the 90s at Walmart, I believe. And a uh, little bit of uh, uh, case hair there but otherwise in very good shape and uh, uh, I love the sticker on it never before seen in America um, the 90s high-tech version so <laughs> kind of fun so that's an old one and then um, let's see uh, the Godzilla King of the Monsters original um, I can't tell you where I got this. I want to say that this was probably like a uh, Suncoast video purchase, something like that. That was a store that I frequented a lot, but this is the American version. And Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, one of my favorites from the Showa era. Um, I've since converted this to uh, DVD. Um, on a rip, uh, but this is the American dub version um, Which certainly has its own charms, but I like having the original Japanese versions as well And then this is one that I really like but at the same time makes me a little bit sad because it's only partial now um, this was a Godzilla VHS box set that I used to have and three of the five tapes have kind of wandered away I can't really tell you where they went, but I had in it Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Gigan, uh, Godzilla 85, and Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, which I still have, and then Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. There's a good chance that uh, the other three tapes are in a bucket in my parents' basement. I just have not gone and looked, um, but I always did like uh, uh, how these were all in a box together. and. Godzilla 85 there on the side, which is you know one of my favorites uh, But the tapes themselves um, I always thought were interesting art uh, compared to the normal uh, Poster art even this one has the shadow of Godzilla 85 in the back um, But yeah Godzilla 85 is one that I love I wish they would give it a nice blu-ray treatment and release it But it never has happened so I have to be happy with the rip that I've made from this tape. Um, just because I think Godzilla 85, the American version, even though it's weaker in different points of the movie, has the, the best ending. And uh, with Raymond Burr's speech over Godzilla falling into the volcano, I just love that and I always have since I was a kid. Uh, I was like eight years old and uh, got to go see this in the theater. So... Uh, one that kind of has a special place for me. And that's it for the VHS. Now, getting into Blu-rays and DVDs. Um, I've got uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra. So, of course, the American version on uh, DVD. And uh, nothing real fancy about this one. Uh, the picture is okay. Uh, but 
about just as grainy as my old VHS was. So, uh, but I still keep it. Interesting cover art, I always thought, and uh, uh, worth having. Then this is actually a uh, an import from Hong Kong uh, that I won on eBay of uh, Godzilla versus the Smog Monster, Godzilla versus Hydra there, and this is not the American dub. Um, I'm guessing it's like a UK dub, but it, it's different. Um, the American dub I've got like a bootleg copy of, and I need to. I need to track down an original, decent quality copy of it, but uh, this is actually part of a set that I gave several to Mark of Horror recently, and since I love everything Smog Monster and it was you know a different type of dubbing, I, I had to keep this one. So sorry Mark, didn't send you this one. Uh, kept it for my own greedy self. And then uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, in a steel book. Um, uh, the only steel book I have in my collection of Godzilla and I did not get the Godzilla King of the Monsters uh, steel book from Best Buy. I didn't care for the cover art on it and on top of that I was just a little bit late to the game. Uh, but there they are on the inside. Even though it does have spots for two discs, it only came with one, and it is the same old Universal Blu-ray release, just with a, a steelbook art, and this was an FYE exclusive. Let's see, next up, getting into the Heisei, or Heisei movies. Um... Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack. Um, this is a real good one. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, Godzilla vs. Megagyrus. Um, probably not the strongest entry in the series, but still a good one. Uh, the Blu-ray of the uh, Japanese version of Return of Godzilla. Um... Godzilla 1984. Um, I really like this. Uh, like I said, I like the Japanese versions. I still just wish that they would have had, you know, both the American and the Japanese version on this disc. Uh, then a, a two-pack: um, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Destroya. Um, <clears throat> I think of the the High Say series. Um, I'm going to say Return of Godzilla is probably my favorite, and then Destroya is uh, definitely the close second. Um, real good movie, enjoy that one. Uh, another copy of Godzilla vs. Megagyrus with different uh, uh, cover art, and uh, uh, this one is a Japanese dub, or I guess it's not dub, it's Japanese original audio, and has English subtitles. Um, the American version of Godzilla Millennium, which was Godzilla 2000 over here. Uh, got to go see this one in the theater. Um, first one I had got to go see in the theater since Godzilla 1985, uh, which was actually the first movie I ever got to see in the theater. So, haven't got to see too many of them in the theater. Um, Godzilla vs. Destroya and Godzilla vs. Megagyrus in a uh, Blu-ray uh, two-pack. Um, so, yeah. And then of the American uh, Godzilla movies, um, of course you've got the Matthew Broderick version, which I really only have because it came free in a box. <laughs> uh, don't care for that movie. Um, Two different versions of uh, the 2014. I've got the Blu-ray, and then um, as a gift, my brother-in-law found me this at a thrift store for like a buck. Uh, the Godzilla 3D, which you must have a 3D player, TV, and glasses to watch, and I have none of the three, but I thought that that lenticular uh, cover was cool, so it's in the collection. And then the new King of the Monsters movie on 4K, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with.
Then I have two copies of Shin Godzilla. Um, one with the slip cover, which Walmart was nice enough to weld their uh, digital HD sticker onto. I wish they hadn't. Um, but uh, nice having a slip cover on it still. And then one that I just picked up on Amazon for the $5 sale. This is going to be a giveaway item. Uh, probably in an upcoming contest um, once I either get around to finally having my 400 subscribers contest or just go and have a 450 subscribers contest. It all kind of comes down to the uh, uh, pandemic at this point. And then I'm not far enough away to get this whole thing in frame uh, but the Criterion set um, which is just awesome. The Showa uh, Criterions, all the Godzilla movies from 1954 to 1975. Um, and uh, just pages of uh, information about the movies and uh, very interesting artwork um, having to do with each movie. And in the back is uh, eight Blu rays. Uh, with the 15 movies on them and with this set you also get the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla which previously I think was not available in the US or at least I had never seen it so well worth having um, very cool and uh, glad that I got it and now getting into figures um, so these were something that I recently showed the uh, Godzilla Vinamates uh, that I've picked up um, so a couple of these were, I think, comic uh, bookstore exclusives, um, you know, available at a variety of comic book stores around the country. Um, the one in particular that I know was exclusive um, was the darkened uh, Mecha Godzilla, uh, which is cool. I like, I like the chubby little uh, uh, blockiness of the design on these. I think they're fun. I've got some other uh, Vinamates from. Uh, Aliens and Nightmare Before Christmas and things like that. Uh, here's the regular uh, Mecha Godzilla. Um, very cool as well. Uh, you know, not a great amount of detail or anything, but but cute and a good shelf filler. Um, the 1962 uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, uh, Godzilla, and the only articulation in these is. Uh, um, their heads move the arms don't move just the heads and I've got separate videos on these guys if you want to see them uh, closer up this is the uh, 1954 original Godzilla uh, in the Vinamate and very cool very cute uh, Godzilla 2000 or Godzilla Millennium uh, one of my favorite designs as well with the purple uh, dorsal fins. I thought he was just, you know, badass looking in this movie. Very tough, very menacing. And then uh, Burning Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Destroya. Uh, very cool looking as well. Great design of Godzilla. And then finally, uh, Rodan. Um, and I think me and Al discussed this before. I believe this is the High Sai series Rodan. Uh, it wasn't specified on the box, but he sure looks like it to me. And he is the only Rodan figure that I have. I did not pick up the NECA Rodan figure just because I didn't care for how it looked. Next up are the uh, only Funko items I have in the collection. So I have. Uh, uh, Dave Maggot's favorite uh, dancing Godzilla body knocker. I think Dave was the first person to point that out in the background of my videos that when I talk in front of the shelf he's always dancing because uh, there's plenty of light over here for him. I've got two other body knockers um, uh, from Terminator Genesis. I've got the uh, uh, T-800 and the uh, Endoskeleton. Uh, in a body knocker, uh, but they're in the, the living room shelf, so those are fun. I picked them up at a uh, uh, little kind of pop culture store down in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. 
And then uh, this little orange Godzilla. I'm not too sure exactly what he's supposed to be. Um, other than maybe he's, you know, there's some flame on him. So I guess it could be an exaggerated version of uh, uh, burning Godzilla just before he goes up. Um, but he was uh, like a Funko Mini. My wife actually got him for me for Christmas. And then the uh, uh, kind of plus-sized uh, Godzilla Funko Pop. Uh, there's a couple variants of this. One, I think, where he's blue. There might even be one where he glows in the dark. Um, but uh, no articulation or anything like that. But still cute. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't have too many Funko Pops, but when they speak to me, i got to grab them, and Godzilla was a must. And next up are the uh, only two items I think I have that are still in their original packaging. Um, as you know, I really take most items out of the package, uh, unless I really like the packaging. And, uh, and I kind of like this one because Godzilla was you know, so prominent on the front there. Um, but these are from the 2014 movie. And really it's uh, uh, just two different versions of Godzilla and two different versions of the Mutos that he fought in that movie. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. I uh, got these, I believe, for Father's Day one year um, from the wife and the kids because they know what I like. Now, getting into some Bandai toys, uh, at least two of them anyway, is my favorite uh, Godzilla bad guy, and that is the Smog Monster or Hydra. Um, I don't know why I'm so drawn to this movie. I don't know if it's the wild uh, 70s soundtrack, uh, the disco stuff. It was the first time I think Godzilla was actually, or you know, people were getting killed on the screen in a Godzilla movie. Um, but I always just like the, the completely uh, uh, odd and weird random design of the smog monster. Um, so I found this one. Uh, at a convention, uh, still had the tags on him from 2006. Um, very cool, one piece. Um, his arms do move a little bit, so that's about the only articulation you're going to get out of him. Uh, my wife got this one for me. Um, can't remember, if maybe a birthday. Um, and, uh, you know, definitely not, uh, uh, definitely not. Uh, awesome quality out of these uh, Bandai figures. You can just plainly see seams here and there where they've cast the different pieces and then glued them together. Um, you know, but I do not see Smog Monster items too often, so these are must haves. And then this was uh, one of those blind box buys um, at FYE, and uh, I think actually you could. It wasn't a true blind box. You could actually see who was in which box you were getting. But this is Smog Monster from uh, his brief appearance in Final Wars. Uh, so just a little bit different of a design on him for that movie. So, but still cool looking. So this was a set of miniature uh, figures from uh, Bandai. And uh, you forgive if you can see, these are quite dusty. Um, I really need to wash everything off. And as I put the shelves back together, I might just do that. But uh, uh, you had a Mothra in the collection. Um, these were all in one uh, box set that I got off of eBay. I think it was a Japan import. <clears throat> and uh, I forget his name um, without going back and looking at the movie. But of course we saw him in, uh, I believe... Uh, destroy all monsters, uh, taking the bridge down. Uh, of course, here's Gigan. Uh, Gigan was always very cool looking and uh, a lot of fun. The space chicken. And then uh, uh, Burning Godzilla. Um, not a real fantastic casting on the head, uh, but at that scale and that price, you know. Who can complain? Godzilla's son from the old Showa series movies, Manila. And, uh, yeah, not too much you can say about him. Again, you can see where they just glued the pieces together. Uh, no articulation. Uh, two different stages of Destroya. Um, 
pretty cool looking very dusty almost cobwebby sorry about that um, but uh, pretty cool at that scale and then of course um, 1954 uh, Godzilla was part of this set so actually get those a little closer in there for you I think for for that scale I think that they did pretty good personally and uh, got this set at a pretty cheap price um, really for for being shipped in so that's that. and while we're talking about little bitty Bandai figures um, these little uh, uh, kind of uh, squatty looking ones little uh, scrunched versions kind of cute um, again my wife and kids got me these um, so there's Godzilla and it's definitely a high say Godzilla but I can't quite tell which one um, uh, Destroyer but all in red this time of course there's Ghidorah And the uh, I say series of uh, Gigan Mothra and Mecha Godzilla. Oops. Continuing on with Bandai or these little uh, diorama sets. So these came uh, from Japan. I won them in an eBay auction and they came with a little bag of like a sweet tart candy and they were in a, a little box that had Godzilla on them. I did not save the boxes and I kind of wish I did. Um, but here he is uh, coming up out of the bottom of the, I guess, what was the floor of the ocean at the beginning of... Uh, um, Godzilla vs. Mothra and you can see on the bottom there um, uh, Bandai 2000 so I've had these for quite a while probably bought them around that time and here he is coming out of the iceberg um, from the beginning of King Kong vs. Godzilla and that's probably my favorite one of the three. I think there was a fourth one in the set. And then this one is unfortunately broke. Um, his feet or his legs broke off from the feet and he has an arm broken off. Um, <clears throat> but it's a, a shot of him from the first movie. So I just try to be careful with that one and not damage it any more than I already have. So continuing on with Bandai figures, um, there's a Bandai Burning Godzilla. So these are the kind of figures that you probably see at Walmart um, in, or, or maybe at Toys R Us, I think is where I got the majority of mine in a uh, cardboard pack that has the tall back with Godzilla on it and the figures out in the open where you can grab it and look at it. Um, you know, hollow, um, not real great uh, uh, detail on them but they're fun um, and they're you know mostly what was available to me so I've got several of these kind of figures but uh, yeah burning Godzilla next up we have space Godzilla from the the same kind of uh, uh, figure so real long tail on them, you know. I was got a kick out of how you know the figure was only this tall, but the box was almost a foot wide um, to to hold his tail. And then uh, I don't know specifically what Godzilla this is. Um, looking at him, I'm just guessing somewhere around that. Uh, uh, Godzilla versus you know Mecha Godzilla kind of time frame like the 70s um, would be my best guess. This is the Bandai uh, 1954 Godzilla. Again, just hollow. Um, uh, his arms do move, um, and. Uh, Decent for the price. I mean, you were looking at 
you know, 10 or $15 for most of these figures, I think, when I was picking them up for Toys R Us. And here's Godzilla Millennium. Um, I think it's the only one of Millennium that I have, um, besides the, the little one I showed earlier. Uh, I do like this design for Godzilla, so I wish I had more of that figure. But uh, uh, pretty cool. I think they they went a little bit uh, extra effort on the spines on this one for me, you know, compared to how the rest of the Bandai figures look. And here is a Bandai Gigan uh, from the Showa series, style Gigan. Again, I'm making this video and I tell you what I am about two inches away from ordering myself a turntable I, <laughs> I really need that for these videos but there's guy game here's the Bandai uh, Mecha Godzilla uh, so his arms do move a little bit but they don't lay down so it looks like he's he's constantly in that kind of a pose um, they, they turn but that's about it So, yep, there he is. And my last of the six or seven inch scale <clears throat> um, band eyes is Destroya. And this Destroya is missing one of his wings. And I was so upset with myself. Um, I bought him and that wing probably should have been folded back like this. Uh, along the back of the packaging and I just did not notice until I got home uh, that he was missing a wing and I never did make it back to that store so so yeah I have a one wing of destroyer um, but yeah he's the only one I have of destroyer in that scale and then here are three little kind of knockoff Godzilla figures if you will um, they're not Toho licensed, they're not made by Bandai, and they just sort of look like Godzilla. So I got them on the shelf, I've just had them forever. I think especially this one I think I've had since I was quite a bit younger. He's been around a while. And then these two are actually uh, the same figure, and I've had them for probably close to 20 years. Um, batteries go in the tail and uh, both of them have a button on their chest that if you push he would roar three times but it was more of a screech than a Godzilla roar um, but yeah and then one has red eyes and one has black eyes I don't know why they're different with the red and the black but but I've got both of them and then just kind of two little random uh, figures um, there's no name stamp on them though they do say uh, Toho, um, but made by Trend Masters, not uh, Bandai. Uh, a Ghidra that's missing two heads, so he used to have all three heads, and my kids played with them, and I have no idea where the other two heads ever went, so I don't know if they'll ever be found. Um, but right now I have a, a one-headed Ghidra on the shelf, and then just a little Godzilla that has red eyes for some reason. Um, very very blocky and and he's also made by trend masters and then while we're on the topic of just little ones um the old you know wind up uh, uh spark making dinosaur that's very godzilla ish looking uh, my wife gave me this it does not work anymore it does not shoot sparks um but i think it's very neat to have on the shelf continuing on this is a godzilla from uh uh, destroy all monsters and this was one of a three or four piece set that uh, all the pieces locked together and each one came with a piece of the title destroy all monsters this is the only one I've ever come across and I've got the uh, piece of the title in the box still uh, up in the attic so if I ever run across the others maybe I can put it together um, but this is made by a company called Far East Monsters, uh, apparently in 2007, and he has a button and he does roar.
So that's him. And as long as we're looking at ones that make noise, these are my Godzilla Christmas ornaments. Um, this is a, a Christmas ornament of Godzilla from the 2014 film. This is a Hallmark ornament. Um, and I got it for Christmas one year. And it has a button and makes noise. Actually goes on for quite a little while. Uh, this one is a very um, late 60s looking Godzilla to me, like uh, uh, maybe around the time of Destroy All Monsters, that sort of thing. Um, and it does not make sound. It is apparently licensed by Toho, and I picked this up at a convention um somewhere with a, a beetlejuice christmas ornament i think for twenty dollars for the pair so ten dollars an ornament and it's made out of a uh, like a cast resin it's got a good weight and feels kind of hard but i would hate to drop it and then this one um i picked up uh this past uh winter whenever i went to kokomo toys and collectibles and uh uh, my wife knew the name of the company that made this. It's a greeting card company. Uh, I forget their name. If, if you go back and look at my Kokomo uh, toy uh, and collectible video, or my haul video from them, I know I list the, the name of the company that made this, but it's, it's a greeting card company that's kind of up there with Hallmark. I just can't think of the name, but this is so cool. Um, the way the letters come out at you, and on the back it says King of the Monsters. Of course, you can hang him uh, by the hook on the back of his neck there. And this one uh, not only makes noise, but also lights up as well. So you push the, the building to activate it, and it's a little sticky. So, I may have the lights turned up a little bit bright here for you to see that, but his spines light up blue, and then the fire lights up, and uh, it's in the other video, but i tell you what, let me try to turn these lights off, and uh, we'll see if we can get that to, to work. Just turn them way down. There we go. Like I said, that button's a little sticky. There it goes. Very cool. Really like that. One more Bandai that is not an ornament, but is about on that scale. Um, to, when I ordered this, I actually thought it was about a six-inch scale figure, and instead I got this, you know, three inch scale or so um, or three and three quarter maybe uh, but it is Godzilla versus the smog monster and uh, aim in focus there he does have the injured eye and he's holding uh, what I always assumed were the eggs out of the smog monster and there's the smog monster laying in front of him dried out um, I just thought that this was a really cool looking little statue um, six or seven inch scale would have been fantastic but again I'll take what I can get whenever it comes to small monster references and so this is one of the last Bandai sets that I have to show um, but this is kind of a evolution of Godzilla set so these all came in one set and the way that they were packaged I didn't particularly care for all of them came with the heads off the tails off and the arms off and you had to uh, kind of pop them on and and the arms don't stay on as good as they could um, they fall off rather easy and like this one it's it's half the arm so I've 
often said that sometime I might glue them on, but I haven't, and I managed to not lose any of the pieces yet. But in the set, you got the original uh, 1954 Godzilla, and he looks pretty good. Then you got the 1962 uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, which is a, a des suit design that I do really like. I always said I like how his head looks like a snake or even a crocodile. Um, then you've got the Godzilla vs. Mothra suit design. And then we jump ahead. Oops, there went his head. Um, we jump ahead quite a little bit and go straight to Godzilla 1985 or the Return of Godzilla the Japanese version and then we go up to Godzilla vs. Destroyer Burning Godzilla this one I like because he's very translucent even through the chest light comes through him uh, very well so kinda kinda different especially for one being so small and then earlier I said I only had the one Godzilla Millennium figure, and apparently I lied, because here's another one uh, in the set. And I bought this right around 2000 or 2001, I want to say. And uh, actually, uh, right here, the, the date stamp says 1999. So this was another eBay win where I had them uh, shipped over from Japan, actually. Now here is a Shin Godzilla figure. Now I cannot tell you the uh, company that made this. I don't remember. I've still got the box, but the box is up in the attic. Um, I can tell you this was about $45, whereas you know the NECAs were in the $20 to $25 range. Um, he's a, uh, a three-piece figure. I think his tail comes apart here and here. So you had him and the two sections of tail and then this base that he stands on and actually underneath his base taped to the bottom is a stand for his tail but the tail has always supported itself uh, very well so I've never never bothered to put it on but uh, I think it looks pretty good um, and, uh, and I like Shin Godzilla I like that design I like how you know torn up and scarred that he looks so yeah there is the unknown figure and here is a couple of little plush Godzilla figures um, from a company called uh, funny p-h-u-n-n-y and uh, uh, from kid robot I guess is the other the other name but um, a gray one and then the atomic blue one I think I forget where I got the gray one uh, maybe at a convention and I want to say he was about ten dollars and then uh, later on found the atomic blue one at another toy show for just a dollar so you know a dollar for a little a little plush Godzilla with spines um, you know why not <laughs> and now a couple of cleanup items because as I emptied the shelf I found other things that I had missed uh, so here are two more pieces that came with that small scale uh, Bandai set that I forgot to show, but here is Mothra's larva. Um, <laughs> very dusty. Need to need to wash these things off and put them back on the shelf. Uh, Mogara um, with a little bit of articulation. The arms move up and down, and then Angiris. Um, you know he he's one of my favorite uh, characters, so I'm surprised actually that I missed him. But uh, uh, he's that you know hollow, lightweight kind of Bandai figure, more of a toy than a figure. Even though I keep saying figure, um, but yeah, that's it. And now we're going to get into uh, one more. Sorry, <laughs> this is weird. Um, this is supposed to be Mothra's larva, and this was a, a blind box buy from FYE, so just kind of a, a weird little figure from Kid Robot as well. Uh, it looks more like a cockroach than, than one of Mothra, Mothra's larva to me, but um, still, keep them on the shelf. 
So now we're going to get into the NECA figures, and I think there's 12 or 13 of those to look at. And now we can start looking at the NECA figures. Um, so this is the 1954 Godzilla uh, poster art version. Um, it came with a, a box where you took an insert out, and, and uh, they colored him in such a way um, that you can uh, recreate the... Uh, original at least original American uh, poster art and the flame breath comes out in front so there's kind of a little bit of a 3d effect to it and uh, I just really like this I thought it was cool and, and an interesting touch by NECA and next up is the Godzilla vs Mothra uh, NECA version um, so I'm gonna like I said go through these NECA's fairly quickly if you go back through my Godzilla playlist, I have a video on each and every one of these. Um, so you can check them out there because I know this video is starting to get a little bit long-winded. But yeah, there's Godzilla vs. Mothra. Godzilla. And going in a not chronological order, um, the King Kong vs. Godzilla, 1962 Godzilla figure with the flame breath effect. Um, I like it that NECA has been doing the flame breath effect on on more of the figures as they come out very cool and uh, and and I like these NECA figures I think they've really stepped up their game and honestly uh, I've compared them at least at cons at least with him and the 2014 Godzilla to the SH monster arts uh, figures and I think they hold their ground and they're a fourth of the price so well worth it to me. So I'll show these two together uh, because they're really the same sculpt but the uh, uh, Godzilla GMK uh, version uh, and then the Atomic Breath version um, with a little bit different paint job. I do wish that his flame breath wasn't quite so droopy because it looks more like he's spitting into the ocean um, but that's about the best I can do with that. This is the NECA uh, Godzilla vs. Destroya Burning Godzilla. Um, so he does not have a... Uh, and there went his head. I have issues with this guy's head staying on if you bump it just right. Um, I have not managed to uh, shove it back onto the peg um, the correct way. There it goes again. Uh, yeah, if you touch him or breathe on him, his head falls off, so... Um, like I said, I think they maybe maybe had some production issues with this guy. I don't know, but his mouth does open and close. I mean, as long as I got his as long as I got his head out here and in my hands, um, there's his mouth opening and closing. I know they just re-released him with the new uh, uh, style uh, box, so maybe they fixed whatever issue was causing that, or maybe I just have a one-off problem. But uh, yeah, there's the burning Godzilla. And the head that doesn't want to stay on. So these two take up quite a bit of shelf space. Um, but Shin Godzilla, um, you know, just in the normal sculpt. And, uh, and then the flame breath effect Shin Godzilla that comes with the long uh, laser-like... Um, uh, flame breath out of the, both the tail and the mouth and you can see um, take that out of there uh, he's got uh, the split split mouth so uh, very cool looking almost that always kind of made me uh, think of the vampire uh, monsters in Blade 2 but yeah there's the uh, the Shin Godzilla I guess I'll say set and then I will show all these together since they kind of go together. But these are the uh, three different variants of uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. So here he is just with the normal uh, paint job. And he does look very good. I do like it. Um, again, I think NECA really stepped up their game. You've got 25 points of articulation or so in these figures. And the mouth opens and closes. Um, so very good on them there. Then they came out with the blue flame effect uh, 
Godzilla, and I love the veins of blue going through him. Um, I don't keep his flame effect in his mouth because I need to set it up, but here it is. Uh, so his flame effect also came with a strike point, so you could make it look like it was actually hitting something. Um, but I need to make some kind of a support to go behind it and have not done that yet. And then this was a uh, Target exclusive um, uh, nuclear Godzilla, I guess you'd call it, when he uh, was going thermonuclear at the end of the movie and actually fought uh, Ghidorah. Um, this was a Target exclusive and uh, my wife got me got it for me for Christmas and she did a real uh, um, undercover act on me she she unfollowed uh, NECA on my Facebook and I didn't know it um, so that I wouldn't see any updates or alerts about this and at one point I asked a friend if he would check Target for it for me and he did not see it and then I just kind of let it go and ignored it and she had ordered it I think on their website so thanks to thanks to my dear wife for giving me that and then this is uh, uh, Mothra from Godzilla King of the Monsters and uh, it comes with the base of uh, her crawling out of the cocoon and that's how I keep it posed it does come with a rod so that you can suspend her in the air from this um, and it's up on the shelf, but uh, I don't keep it uh, displayed that way. And then the last NECA uh, pickup was my uh, most recent figure of Godzilla uh, 1985, or I guess Return of Godzilla. And he did not come with a flame breath effect or anything, um, but this is just one of my uh, uh, favorite looks for, for Godzilla. I think he looks great in that movie. And again, uh, wish I had that movie on a nice Blu-ray release, so maybe someday. And then uh, I actually had to back up a little bit to get this bad boy in frame, but um, this is a Polar Lights model kit, um, Godzilla Diorama. At the time, this was a Toys R Us exclusive uh, when I bought it. Um, I've never opened it. Um, you can see the plastic bits through the window there. Um, skill level 2, um, and I'm just not much of a modeler. And I, th I thought maybe someday I might put this together and just have not done it yet. But it says uh, uh, 16 inch tall um, background diorama to create exciting display, it says. So maybe someday I'll get brave and uh, uh, do that, but I have not at this point, and I've probably had this thing uh, sitting in the closet for probably close to 20 years. Um, the box actually says 2001 on it, and uh, that may be just about accurate. And so now to wrap up the Godzilla uh, video, um, I pulled the things off that I normally have on the wall over here. Um, one of them is the Aurora Godzilla uh, model kit. This is not an original uh, from back in the day or anything like that. This is from uh, 2000 um, when they did some reissuing of some of the Aurora kits. And a friend actually got this for me um, uh, for my birthday along with a uh, reprint of the original uh, Japanese poster and the original American poster. Um, both of those are rolled up, put away in the closet, so I don't have them out right now. Um, and then uh, with that, I also have the uh, two-sided uh, reversed on one side uh, Godzilla 2000 uh, poster that I got from a video store. Uh, in town uh, around that time when the movie was on VHS so um, and then that brings me to the last thing which is my autographs and I know I'm gonna uh, butcher these names but I'll try um, so uh, we met um, actually the first one that we met was uh, uh, the actor who played Godzilla in Godzilla Millennium and uh, sorry for that glare trying to get it to where you can see it so he signed in gold on the on the picture there and his name is uh, Sutomu Kitagawa 
if I got that right. I have no idea. Uh, if he's watching, I apologize. <laughs> And then actually at our most recent convention, um, when I met the Phantasm cast, um, we met the actor who played uh, Godzilla in uh, Godzilla GMK. And uh, uh, his name is Mizuhu uh, Yoshida. And he was pretty wild, pretty fun, uh, very lively. Uh, so far, neither of these gentlemen spoke English. Um, so I didn't really get to talk to them. I think they could, you know, understand thank you. And, you know, we kind of bow our heads at each other and, 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 and just thank them, you know. I mean, these guys are a big part of, you know, my life and, and uh, uh, you know, what I like and my passion. And, and you just want to tell them thank you. So I think I could get that through to them. Um, and then uh, actually a convention last summer or about a year and a half ago now, I guess. It was that long? No, it was last summer. Yeah, last June, July. Uh, we met Ken Sasuma, who played uh, Godzilla in Godzilla 1985, or The Return of Godzilla, a Japanese title, uh, which is my favorite one. Um, so uh, that was very cool. Now, he did have a, a niece with him. Sorry, my battery's dying. Uh, he did have a niece with him who spoke English, and she could at least interpret. Um, and so I was able to talk to him a little bit. And besides playing Godzilla uh, 1985, he also played the Smog Monster, which is my favorite uh, Godzilla villain um, and my favorite Godzilla movie. Uh, so he signed over the Smog Monster for me as well. And then he was very excited to see uh, my other autograph and the one that's really to me the pride and joy of my Godzilla collection and why I saved it for the last thing is Haru Nakajima's autograph. So we got to meet Haru six to eight months before he passed away and uh, um, he did not speak English as well. There was no interpreter at the table with him. Um, but, but, you know, thank you. He understood thank you. He said thank you. Um, and he was just smiles the whole time. He, he wasn't in the best of shape, uh, from what I could tell. I mean, between autographs, he was hitting oxygen. Um, so, so he was in poor health, but he was still turning out to the conventions and coming and seeing the fans, you know, and in, in other countries. And, and so I was able to say to the original Godzilla, uh, thank you. And, and that really, um, just meant something to me. It, it really really kind of hit hit me so um that's it that's the entire godzilla collection i saved what i thought was the best for last and uh, i hope you liked it and and if you stayed with me this long i i thank you and uh it is almost midnight so here soon i'll be tallying up the uh, results for who gets a shin godzilla code and if you've watched this far, it's actually three codes now I'm going to give out. Um, I found a third code in my Blu-ray of it, so I'm going to put that up as the third place prize. So the top three names drawn uh, will get a Shin Godzilla digital code. I hope they all work. Um, if that third one doesn't work, I do apologize. Um, but the freshest one will go to the first place winner. So best I can do, folks. Uh, so anyway, like and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, definitely more of this kind of stuff to come. Uh, i got to now get my Godzilla shelf dusted and cleaned and, and put back together. So give me something to do on quarantine. So until next time, uh, that's enough for me right now. Uh, I'll talk to you all later. Thanks.